and we have discussed the generator characteristics regarding this open circuit characteristics, short circuit characteristics, zero power factor characteristics. And then we are discussing calculation through uh, calculation of uh, that uh, voltage regulation through MMM method. MMM method. Do you remember this? I think we were here. Do you remember this? Hello? 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 Am I audible to you? <laughs> Do you remember that I think we were here uh, when we last had the class? Manipurche? Yes or no? Maybe uh, some set of persons attending some classes, you may be the other set. Uh, did you attend the other classes, uh, earlier cl uh, classes in this subject? Uh, Rahul Das, I remember your name, I think you were there. So we were discussing the voltage regulation. If you remember, huh? and then we discussed the EMF method, right? And then we came to MMF method, and from there we got to know different generator characteristics. We needed to know rather. Then we started discussing generator characteristics, and then uh, these are the after uh, the generator JPFC zero power factor. So this is the these are the steps actually through which we can calculate voltage regulation through MMF method. Magnetomotive force method (MMF). Okay. So now you see uh, that uh, the equivalent circuit. If you remember what we discussed, it's looking like this, na? So this is the terminal voltage per phase, and then this is uh, armature resistance, this is CD actance, and this is no DMF. So now, if you if you see this phasor diagram, so there is a, a intermediate phasor E0 dust, which can be calculated by uh, doing Vt plus IARA, Vt plus IARA, interim voltage, voltage, interim EMF, E0 dust. So after uh, taking the resistive account, okay. So then if you draw the phasor diagram, this is Vt plus IARA will be zero. Right side, there's a phasor diagram. And the phase of E0 dust is having delta dust, delta dust, lagging to Vt because we have assumed here always lagging load, right? We have assumed here lagging load. So now corresponding to E0 dust, there will be one FF F dust from OCC, right side, you, know, you see, there is a OCC drawn and corresponding to E0 dust, you can find out FF dust. Continuity Harley Tuna Portal Pujo Suti Teva Kutha Punto Arzi de Glamna, the class Gulo to Kori Sarkabule. What a borrowed Tele Kato Korabolo. So, Ejero dust corresponding to this, you have MMF FF dust. Polespatas, Pachuto. Okay, 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 all right, all right. So now, uh, now it is written also, find E0 dust from one, so you can calculate E0 dust because you know what is armature current, what is armature resistance, and what is the terminal voltage. So from that, you can calculate E0 dust. Now, uh, now uh, step two, find FF dust corresponding dust from OCC. So OCC is drawn here. So now phase of E0 dust, it is clearly 
it is actually when the current is lagging by L theta. So you have assumed, uh, we have assumed uh, lagging load, lagging power factor load. So we have E0 dust is having a phasor of pi by 2 minus delta dust, E0 dust, sorry, minus delta dust. And if you see that uh, behind this E0 dust, FF dust, which will be leading E0 dust by 90 degree. So the phasor of FF dust will be actually 90 degree minus delta dust from, from reference phasor VT. It's quite clear. So then you have, you have measured uh, or you have got the value of FF dust from OCC and you have known phase also. Now in step three, in step three, you have two short circuit characteristics. So now short circuit characteristics is what actually? It is actually IA versus E0. IA versus 0. Just a minute, someone is. Right. So it is IA versus E0. So now we go to. Uh, so, uh, IA versus IF. So IF is proportional. IF is having E0 also. So you can say IA, IA versus IF. Right. So IF and E0, they are, they are related. Uh, if you give a field, right, so you can have no load EMF also, right? So actually, uh, you can draw uh, IA versus IF, IA versus E0, anything, but, but, but for this calculation, we will use IA versus IF. Now you come to the, this. Uh, this. So IA versus IF, or on the other hand, you can use IA versus FF, the field MMF, right? The field MMF, IA versus field MMF. So now corresponding to that IA, you can calculate the armature MMF required, FA. Right? Now FA plus FF dust, FA plus FF dust is final FF, right? FA plus, sorry, FF plus FA is FF dust. Now you, you can get FF equal to if it does minus FA. Are you getting me? These are the, the this is the, the basic formula. The field MMF, armature MMF will give you the resultant phasor. Now here your resultant phasor is FF dust, which we have found out from corresponding. So now then you know FF dust and you know FA from, uh, from uh, sort of characteristics. So you can calculate the no load MF, FF, FF dust minus FA is actually FF from this equation. Just a minute. So now if you know this, so uh, so, so you can FF dust, I told the magnitude is known pi by two delta and FA, armature magnitude is known from short circuit characteristics. And phase is actually the armature current phase. The phasor uh, location is the same as the armature current. So now if you make minus FA, yeah, from the plot it is minus FA is the opposite direction. So FF dash minus FA. So you got FA. Now once you have found out FA, so from the OCC corresponding to FA, you can easily calculate E0. Now, once you know E0, you know B, so you can directly calculate the voltage regulation from the formula E0 minus B by uh, E0 into 100%. So these are the steps that you can use to find the regulation through MMM method. Now, here the advantage is that actually adding to the load, uh, load factor is taken care of rather. In EMM method, we were in the synchronous reactance that was calculated based on the rated values. Rated values means rated current, uh, rated field, etc., etc. But usually in operating conditions, different operating conditions, this does not hold good. So therefore, the errors are incurred in the earlier method, the EMM method. Now to, to reduce that error, so we have to use different characteristics of the machine to get the actual uh, situation, actual situation during calculation. So that is why I say if your IA change naturally changes, naturally 
if a will change so naturally you get a different value of a right so uh, you, here the uh, you get a, a better uh, accuracy accuracy is improved you can say and improved to a good extent error is uh, much lesser compared to what we find uh, in uh, this uh, emm method the the third method is actually zero factor method zero power factor method Porti or sometimes it is known as Porti angle method. Okay, so this method requires both OCC and ZPFC for calculation. OCC and ZPFC. So now uh, you see that here uh, in the first step, what we do, we we draw uh, Porti triangle first. Now, what is a Porti triangle? That I will tell you. Uh, now uh, step one, the prerequisites are written here. That uh, armature resistance, terminal voltage, armature current, and power factor angle are known from the given data. Naturally, what you know, the armature resistance is mentioned. If it is not mentioned, you can assume it to be zero. No problem. Uh, now, if it is mentioned, then you, you know it, right? A terminal voltage at which voltage the machine is operating, and at which load. That means the magnitude of armature current and power factor. You have to calculate the voltage regulation. That is also known, okay. And here you should require to know the OCC and ZPFC data. OCC and ZPFC. In the other case, uh, that is the M we used to have, or we used to know the data of OCC and SCC, short circuit characteristics. But here you must know the data of OCC and zero power characteristics. Now uh, to know OCC and ZPFC. So you can draw these two characteristics, OCC and ZPFC, right? So now from there, you can draw Portier triangle. Now what is Portier triangle? It is behind the name of uh, scientist Portier. Now what uh, he did some work empirically, and the work is like this. So now uh, the, you just understand first what is Portier triangle. So now when we explain the term, when we explain the term uh, ZPFC, rather ZPF uh, characteristics, zero power factor characteristics, we saw the plot, uh, the kind of plot, what is shown in the, uh, what is shown in this uh, figure, right? Start from A, from A, and it is having the shape, uh, which is absolutely nearly, almost nearly similar to OCC, just like a CP OCC. So now from the origin O, the MMF axis, OA, right? OA MMF is the MMF what we call that time while while uh, drawing that characteristics is minimum required to develop some voltage, right? Or rather, it is the MMF required to overcome the armature reaction effect and the leakage reactance effect, considering totally zero power factor load. That means zero power factor lagging load, totally inductive load, right? So now you see, uh, so many uh, persons are entering late. So now you see that uh, the zero power factor characteristics and the y-axis we have the voltage, right? And from the rated voltage, if you draw a line for a general, parallel to the field axis rather you can say. So these lines, cuts both the OCCs and FC, uh, ZPFCs at some points. Now with ZPFC, it crosses at the point B, right? The horizontal line drawn from V rated. So now from B, right? Now another thing is that, which I told while uh, while drawing that OCC, the OCC has quite a bit of a linear portion, right? Due to the air gap present in the magnetic circuit. So now if you draw a line, which is actually tangent to this linear portion, right? So you get a line, which is known as air gap line, air gap line, right? Air gap line. So now from the point B, from the point B, see, you can cut section BC, which is equal to OA. BC equal to OA, you can cut, okay? Now from C, if you draw a line parallel to the air gap line, it will meet the OCC at point D. So now the triangle BCD, if you add, if you add BD, so you get a triangle BCD. So this triangle is known as 
Portia triangle. Now from D, if you draw perpendicular on BC, it is DE, right? So you get a line DE, line section DE, right? This DE represents some voltage because it is parallel to the voltage axis. Now this voltage, it has been observed that it is a voltage drop across the armature leakage reactance. IAXAL drop, right? DE is the IAXAL drop. Sir, 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 bolche apna screen ka na dekha jaache na, mane blank dekha jaache. Ire, ato baar ami switch korchi bolna to chekar me pro. Sab samay ekono entry hoche to dekchi ami. Jodi the ta kato khondo re hoche na? Aisi sir, do three minutes door ekono dekha jaache. Haan, do three minutes door dekha jaache. Acha, acha, acha. Chika, acha. Ami ekono dekchi, dekhi. देखो तो एक बार पाँच सौ की ना और अब पहले तो हमें स्टार्ट करो हाँ सर एक बार ठीक है जी एक बार ठीक है हाँ अब मैं आगे बात की पोटिया तो देखो नहीं okay, कर देख देख के बुझ दे बात okay. बुझे कैसे तो हाँ सर हाँ सर एक्चुअली एयर कैप लाइन ड्रॉ करो ना जो देखते बात चो एयर कैप लाइन है इन्हें ले तारपुरे B C is equal to A B होच्छे B related थे के parallel line टाना होच्छे with x axis that is a field axis right now from C you draw a line which is parallel to the air gap line it meets O C C at point D so the triangle B C D is known as Fourier triangle ठीक है जे now if you draw a line sorry perpendicular from D on B C that is D E so this line DE represents some voltage because it is parallel to the voltage axis. Now this voltage is actually the leakage reactance drop of the machine. Leakage reactance drop, right? Now here, uh, the first step is to draw the Bottier triangle first and then you can calculate the leakage reactance because DE is IA XAL. So now you know IA, magnitude of IA. So therefore XAL you can find out at that point. So DE by IA, DE by IA, XL, right? So then armature leakage reactance you have found out. And in step two, you can redraw the equivalent circuit. And here the interim voltage, instead of just uh, having RA drop, you can have RA plus JXL drop and you can, you can have that interim EMF E0 dust. Because you have already calculated XL based on the armature current, which is uh, given in the problem or which is known to you right so then actually from here uh, you can you can uh, you can calculate e0 dust that is actually B plus ia into ra plus jxl dekhte pacho to screen ami onek bar abar entry hocche bolle amake change korte hocche i'm very sorry kintu ekhon ekhono dekha jacche to so we have a phase diagram so bt plus ira plus jixl is zero dust so all the time they are entering i don't know it is 330 still entering okay anyway আচ্ছা স্যার আমাদের কিন্তু এই ক্লাসটা যে এখন হবে এটার কোনো নোটিস ছিল না আমাদের আমি কাটতে বলেছিলাম এরকম হ্যাঁ বলো पांच मिनट आगे ये रोकूं नोटिस जो दी दिए जो दी क्लास हुआ है ताहले माने ये रोकूं माध्यम घंटा पढ़े वो लोग जो एंटर को चाहिए ये टा हॉबी एक एक एक्सपेक्टेड ये ठीक जुगाड़ नहीं अपना ये बुझा चिया आज ना ये टे नोटिस था मैं काल की बोले चिला मैं क्या वक्त जो फोन करे चिला वाके है ताके हम ठीक आज है एनीवे सो सो इन स्टेप टू इन स्टेप टू यू जस्ट सी दैट यू हैव बीटी आईआरए प्लस जीआईएक्सएल इरो डस्ट इट्स तो चुप स्टेप टू सो इफ यू कंसीडर अ लेगिंग लोड राइट सो योर इरो लीडिंग दैट इज एट एंगल डेल्टा डस्ट सो नाउ इन द नेक्स्ट स्टेप 
So you can draw the hazard diagram, MMF hazard diagram also. That is that corresponding to zero dash. You can draw a dash which is reading zero dash by ninety degree, right? So now if you dash phasor will be ninety degree plus delta dash, right? So if you dash phasor will be having uh, an angle of 90 degree plus delta dash with respect to bt. Okay, see. The hazard is clear. Hello. No, sir. Are you? What are the hazards? What are the hazards? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, No, sir. Just a minute. Dekhte to. to hobe na je kiu dekhte hobe kiu dekhte hobe na. Ha dekha now, if you have a dash, if you have a dash, corresponding to OCC, you can collect zero dust. OCC is a prerequisite. You must know OCC and zero power factor characteristics. Now, zero dust to the Geneja, corresponding to FF dust, right? Zero dust to the, sorry, FF dust to the Geneja, corresponding to zero dust, needs phases known. Then you can apply the same formula, right? Your FF dash to your resultant, and then FF plus FA equal to FF dash. Now here FA is actually BE. Ever I read in the diagram, Korea diagram. Ever the way is a Korea triangle. The significance of bolam D is the IAXL drop. But you see, if you consider this horizontal line BC or rather BE, CE, etc., these are on. MMF axis because they are parallel MMF, right? Now, out of which CE will represent the MMF corresponding to the leakage reactance, right? And BE will actually uh, represent the MMF according to armature reaction, right? So now, here uh, the effect of the reactance has already been considered because you have calculated T0 based on your RA and XAL, right? So the only remaining part is BE. B is the armature reaction effect. So now you have to consider the MMF divided for armature reaction, which is BE here, which is BE here. So then you have got uh, in the next page, next page, say FF plus uh, BE equal to dust, and step five you get that FF equal to FF dust minus BE. So now here you get the phasor of B of current that is minus theta. So you can uh, you can just calculate your FF that the final uh, or rather no load MMF. And from FF again using OCC you can calculate the no load EMF. Now once you know no load EMF you can calculate the voltage regulation based on the known formula E0 minus VT by E0. Okay. These are the uh, these are the major uh, three techniques that are used for calculating uh, the armature uh, uh, you can say voltage regulation armature voltage regulation. But actually, there are other methods also. Now, ESA method uh, it is it will consult your books or I can explain. It's similar, but it considers some uh, saturation effect all. So I think uh, if you don't understand it. I can I can discuss here. Otherwise, to cut short the thing, uh, this is enough actually. After uh, this Fourier uh, triangle method, this is fairly accurate. This Fourier triangle method. I mean, here uh, you can accurately calculate the leakage reactance effect, and then the armature, uh, then the armature reaction effect, and then calculate the voltage relation uh, to a to a higher higher high accuracy to at very high accuracy. You can say. So the method is actually that American Standard Association method. So it, it, uh, it also uses a, uh, say empirical uh, formulas or empirical uh, assumptions. Now for that, I think you just go through first the book 
if you don't understand in the next class i will just tell you uh, because then uh, at least power uh, thing i i should explain power angle characteristics the next step is actually next step is actually how to determine parameters how to circuit right you know uh, induction machine also d machine also uh, equivalent circuit parameters so here also we have equivalent circuit parameters and in the equivalent circuit we have seen there are two elements mainly one is xs and another is ra the armature resistance and xs is synchronous reactance right so now out so ra is quite insignificant as i was telling repeatedly because the ratio of xs to ra is very large and uh, while calculating the voltage regulation and all the effect of ra does not matter much xs is the major factor so uh, so, so xs determination is uh, actually uh, is actually our major concern otherwise uh, to determine uh, armature resistance is very easy you can you can uh, use any standard low resistance or very low resistance method measurement method we can be non resistance and then uh, multiply this uh, values uh, obtained by this kelvin double bridge with some factor because there you use dc supply and the machine is actually used under ac right and there are skin effects and which can uh, because of higher diameter of the conductors okay so the skin effect can become significant so you can at least multiply by the uh, obtained value uh, by 1.5 to 1.6 even uh, to get the it depends on machine to machine smaller machines the multiplication factor is lower for larger machines the multiplication factor will be higher because you have uh, you have larger diameter conductors conductors with larger diameter for bigger machines so that's all now excess determination uh, there is a, a synchronous reactance use short circuit test. we use short circuit test what is short circuit test you you short circuit the armature and run the machine at a speed between 1/3 uh, of synchronous speed to any synchronous speed uh, of near even higher uh, and then uh, you measure the you, you apply some field current rather field voltage right voltage at the field so there is a field current okay and then you measure the short circuit current okay now the division of uh, e0 right division of e0 by uh, say this uh, isc short circuit voltage will give you so short circuit current will give you the measurement of excess so that has been already known still uh, repetition i'm doing here this so is actually e by square root under you're looking at the equivalent circuit r square plus x square right so now from scc uh, you can uh, you can have if you give actually corresponding to that you have to calculate know what is the emf that is uh, from 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 open circuit characteristics okay you can use open circuit characteristics data and then you determine zero and then e0 by that short circuit current will give you the measurement of excess e0 by the short circuit current the last excess e0 by isc magnitude so you can calculate excess to a very uh, fairly accurate uh, value uh, at a fairly accurate value so now You see, uh, our angle characteristics. The other term, what we will uh, discuss now, is the power angle characteristics. Now, what is power angle? Now, if you look at the, the diagram, what I was drawing earlier, so there is between E zero and uh, V T, right? E zero and V T. Okay. Now, if you calculate the power. you you will find that this actually is a significant role for power generation or power delivery from the machine to the load them or to the grid so therefore this angle is known as power angle angle means the angle between e0 and t so now here uh, for this it uh, is um, visible hello 
here you see that uh, we, we always assume that the terminal voltage is at a reference value with the reference phase of 0 degree. So now E0 is having some angle, right? E0 is having some angle. So now I don't know whether you have read the power flow equation or not. So if you find that E0 is leading uh, uh, Bt by some angle, that is the delta which is shown here, the power flows from the machine to the load. That actually acts as a generator, right? And if E0 is lagging, right, from Bt, right, delta is minus delta, right? So power will flow from Bt towards the E0, that means towards the machine. That means the machine will uh, work as motor, right? So then while motoring, we will consider delta to be negative, and while generating, we will consider delta to be positive. This is the reason what, what we will follow throughout, okay? So now considering that it is a generator, so you can apply Kirchhoff's voltage law in the circuit given. So you can know what is the value of Vt. Vt is actually e minus Ia into Ra plus Jxs. So now from which you can calculate Ia, which is actually E0 minus E0 angle delta minus Vt angle 0 degree by Zs. So R plus Jxs, this has been already known that it is Zs at an angle theta s, right? So this is E0 minus Vt by Zs. So then power at load actually can uh, calculate like this Vt into Ia conjugate, phasor, Vt Ia conjugate, right? You have seen from the from your first year how to calculate power having known Vt and Ia. Vt Ia conjugate or other way also you can do Vt conjugate Ia, whatever it is. But the thing is that if you take Vt Ia, that reactive power will be needed. Convention will be just a little different, but you can magnitude in value. Now, Vt into Ia conjugate, if you take, so Ia is here. Ia conjugate is nothing but E minus delta minus Vt is 0. 0 plus 0 minus 0 is same. So you have Zs minus theta s. Now, if you if you multiply both of them, so you get E0 Vt by Zs angle theta s minus delta and minus Vt square by Zs and theta s. So this is the complex expression for total power, right? So now you can uh, split it up into real and imaginary part, giving rise to giving rise to active and reactive power. So if you see, uh, if you split up to real and imaginary part, so you can get P plus JQ equal to so E zero B T by J S cos theta S minus delta minus B T square by J S cos theta S plus J E zero B T by J S J S sine theta S minus delta minus Vt sin theta s. That's quite clear. So now, uh, that's why you can see that P is the real part and Q is the imaginary part. Now, if you take the acting power P, so this gives you the first part, that is P0 Vt by Zs cos theta s minus delta minus Vt square by Zs cos theta s. Now, from here, you can do a little bit of, uh, say, trigonometric adjustment with help of the uh, with the help of the impedance triangle, now here impedance triangle is drawn at the left, okay, where R A excess theta s is the angle, and then Z s and alpha s, alpha s plus theta s is ninety degree, right, from the impedance triangle, right triangle you can see. Now from here you can see alpha s equal to pi by two minus theta s, or theta s equal to pi by two minus alpha s, whatever it is, okay. So now if you theta s here uh, in the first term of p you get e0 vt by zs cos pi by 2 minus pi s minus delta so then right term is same cos theta s so now from here you can rewrite this like this the e0 vt by zs sin delta plus alpha s minus vt square by zs now cos theta s also from the impedance triangle you can write as ra by zs cos theta s is ra by zs if you replace it so you get minus bt square ra by zs square okay this term you get now from here you can have two uh, cases now always i was telling that for uh, for a better approximation or for easier uh, calculation you can sometimes take like ra equal to zero ra negligible now if you do that then your xs will be actually zs and alpha s will be zero because ra you have neglected ra is zero that are equal to zero 
and then uh, alpha is equal to zero, you get the power expression as e to vt by xs. It will be zs I have written. It will be actually xs e to vt by xs sine delta, right? And if you draw a p delta curve, so it will be simply sine curve. So now for positive delta, you get the generating uh, portion and for negative delta, you get the motoring portion, right? And the maximum power you can give, get as by calculating dp del d delta equal to zero. So you get e to vt by zs cos delta to zero. So now that happens at delta equal to pi by two because e to vt by zs are finite values. So only at delta pi by two cos delta will be zero. So you can get maximum power at delta equal to pi by two, that is e to vt by zs. So this is the same uh, derivation and this is the same plot and all that is shown here. So now if you include resistance, say under resistance, if you include under resistance, I don't want to keep with the hotel, I need to tell you to see. Hello? 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 So now, actually, uh, for uh, for the, the case where we consider resistance, actually, this dt square by d square RA represents some losses, yeah, losses, resistance losses, resistive losses. So now, uh, if you if you have it, actually, the entire expression. So you can uh, you can plot p versus delta uh, like this. And with two parts, one is P1, which is a sinusoidal variation, and another is constant term, P2. It is minus P square by JS square RA, and is the, the negative half of power. Okay, this this one. No, uh, the other one actually, uh, actually, if you see that at delta equal to zero, right? At delta equal to zero, so you will get uh, this little plot. So actually, uh, you get a term delta uh, leading by alpha s. Uh, I mean, this uh, which one? P1. See, one, one plot is shown P1, right? P1, P1, the top one, P1, right? So P1 is the plot for last term, right? So now if you add both of them, you will get the resultant plot P1 plus P2 at different deltas. Right, to add both of them, you get the resultant plot. Now, to have an idea, you can, uh, if you to have some idea, you can uh, see how the plot can be looking like uh, making by, by considering the case at delta equal to zero. By considering the case at delta equal to zero. Now, if you put delta equal to zero, let us say. You get, uh, you get uh, you know, P0 by Zs sine alpha s minus P square by Zs square RA, the resultant plot, right? So now this uh, at delta equal to P0 by Zs square RA minus B square by Zs square RA. So now if you take B square by Zs square RA common, you get E0 minus BT. This into E0 minus BT. So now there are only three cases like that that you get you can excite the machine in such a way that e0 equal to vt that is known as normal excitation that is known as normal excitation e0 equal to vt so in that case the plot the resultant plot will pass through the origin right so that has been shown in the third third plot from top right e0 equal to vt third one e0 and vt that is known as over excited condition excitation is more than the turbine voltage over excited condition so you get a resistant delta equal to zero and the plot is the second plot which is shown, shown also by arrow zero greater than vt right and if it is under excited that means e0 is less than vt so at delta equal to zero you can get a plot which is negative that and which is also by arrow, E0 minus the under excited case, right? So you can you can have this 
three options as a resultant are P1 and P2 with P1 and P2 separately parted like this. So this is what, and then
হ্যালো হ্যাঁ শুনতে পাচ্ছ কতক্ষণ শোনা যায়নি এই পাতাটা এরকম হতে থাকলে তো বিপদ এই হচ্ছে এখন একটু সহ্য করতে হবে তোমাদের আর কি করা যায় তারা এক মিনিট দেখি বাস বেরোতে হবে মনে হচ্ছে আবার দেখো তো এবার পাচ্ছ না হ্যাঁ শুনতে পাচ্ছ এবার দেখো দেখতে পাচ্ছ কিনা বলো পাচ্ছ তাহলে একটা কাজ করো আজকে আমার দ্বারা নেটওয়ার্কে আবার প্রবলেম হয়ে গেল মানে দেখা যাচ্ছে যাচ্ছে <laughs> then first case is actually r equal to 0 alpha is equal to 0 x is equal to zs and if you put that in the equation uh, shown under box it will be q equal to 0 vt by xs cos delta minus vt square by xs thik ache next page dekha jacche হ্যালো হ্যালো হ্যালো
Hello. হ্যাঁ তোমার শুনতে পাচ্ছ কিছু হ্যালো হ্যালো হ্যাঁ স্যার এখন শোনা যাচ্ছে এই তো খুব মুশকিল হচ্ছে মানে অধ্যায় হচ্ছে হচ্ছে না স্লাইডটা দেখতে পাচ্ছো এবার দেখা যাচ্ছে নিচের দিকে আছে দেখো মাইনাস ভিটি স্কোয়ার বাই এক্সেস হ্যাঁ দিয়ে ডান দিকে দেখানো আছে এবার ফার্স্ট যে টার্ম ইজিরো ভিটি বাই এক্সেস দ্যাট ইজ এ কোসাইন টার্ম কস ডেল্টা তার মানে ইটস ভেরি উইল বি অ্যাজ পার লাইক দা কার্ভ যদি হয় তাহলে ইউ উইল গেট যে যে টপ কার্ভটা ইউ ইজিরো ভিটি বাই এক্সেস কস ডেল্টা এইভাবে দেখানো আছে এবার তার সঙ্গে যদি ফাইনাল কিউ1 প্লাস কিউ2 করো দ্যাট ইজ অ্যাকচুয়ালি দেন দিস addition of this uh, two uh, one cosine curve and one constant so you get this uh, total total that means uh, at, at delta equal to zero if you find it it will be actually e0 vt by xs minus vt square by xs so vt by xs you become now vt by xs into e0 minus vt again similar situation uh, normal excitation e0 equal to vt the resultant will be zero that means the curve will pass from the origin that means e0 equal to vt uh, the third third plot third plot shown eh? for both for both plus delta and minus delta that means generating and motoring now e0 greater than vt over excited so it is something like the second one right which is having a positive value at delta equal to 0 so you get this one and e0 less than vt under excited this is the fourth one where uh, actually the result in q is negative at delta equal to 0 that means that one bottom one okay now to calculate the maximum reactive power requirement that is the uh, q del 0 that means vt by x cos time to differentiate will be minus sin delta m will be 0 so delta m will be actually pi eh? zero actually is not uh, cannot be taken because uh, because you see that uh, at at delta equal to 0 uh, the, the, i mean uh, there is no at delta equal to 0 if you put so you, you get uh, power but actually it is not exactly the minimum one so that is why uh, you get you get uh, oh. and the, you get at delta m equal to pi and for plus pi it is for the generating and for minus pi it is for the motor okay now if you put at delta equal to pi maximum power you see the maximum power you see delta equal to pi this is minus cos delta minus cos pi is minus 1 that is minus e to vt by xs minus vt square by xs so you get actually maximum value at delta equal to pi so at delta equal to 0 it, it cannot happen because there it is one value is positive one value is negative although mathematically it is coming but but physically at delta equal to 0 you don't get the maximum magnitude of uh, power it gives you the minima always dp derivative both minima and maxima so if you put there you can get d to d to q d delta so you you don't get that positive value okay to get sorry negative value maxima so here in that way you get you get the maximum power is yes, and then maximum power you can put in this bit by excess into e0 plus bt right say as that for generator motor and generator maximum values are same minus bt by excess e0 plus bt 
and minus b by x is zero plus b. But one angle is plus pi, another angle is minus pi. Okay, so same way you can do it for r a not equal to zero, and you can get the similar plot. Okay, so up to this I finish today, right? Up to this I finish today, and your uh, term test will be up to this yeah, page nine. So uh, I will try to uh, even consult the books also. I will be sending you the notes by today evening yeah, for this part. Okay. सुनते पाते हो? वही कॉन्सेप्ट कर भी इपोर्चन तो सीले बास, ठीक है जे? और हमें नोट टा देख ची, आज सुनने वाला काल सोकाले पढ़िए तो वो, हैं? By nineteenth, eighteenth, nineteenth, you may make it sure that you can give the class test or the intermediate assessment, okay? आज के कारा थिले मात्रों नौजवान तो अनेक डूगलो तार पर सब बेरी कैसे नहीं की राहुल ताले ये रखने तो मुश्किल आज ठीक आजे ठीक आजे ताले मंडे ट्यूसडे को रे एक टा क्लास ताले आम के एरेंज करे दाव नेक्स्ट वीक है हाँ मंडे टा छुट्टी आ सी मंडे को ट्यूसडे आई हैव टू गो टू द डिपार्टमेंट देन वेन दीते पारो ना होले ओके तो वो द वेन इस दिन की फाका पाव जावे अच्छा देख देख ले तुम लोग आम के एक टा बोल बे हाँ नेक्स्ट वीक एक टा ठीक है तो हमारे संगे तो हमें बोले हैव यू सीन मी और हैव आई सीन यू देखा था क्या हुए चे ना सही ये तो सुधु हुए चिलो ना कंप्यूटर सीपीएनए में तो आमिता ले बेरी जाची ओके ओके हाँ